Happy Mars Monday, everybody. Austin to Mars here with your Mars One update for this week. It's already week seven in this process, and I just realized this weekend that I haven't even talked to you guys about the selection process at all. So that's what I'll talk to you about today. Hello, everyone. My name is Marwa Mikkeli. My name is Joseph Sweeney. My name is Gunnar. My name is Austin Bradley. I would like to go to Mars because I would love to be a part of something great. Being part of the building process, that is just the most fascinating experience ever. Ever since I can remember, I've wanted to go somewhere genuinely new. I wanted to leave this planet. I, I want to go to another planet. I want to see a different sunset from another planet's sky. I would like to be part of the team who proved the theory wrong that every intelligent civilization destroys itself before it can explore the universe. Those were application videos from some of my friends in the Aspiring Martians group. Since Mars One released the application on April 22nd, hundreds of people have put in their application and made it viewable by the public on the internet. Part of the application was the 70 second video which you can see online, and two of the questions in the six part questionnaire are also viewable online. But the questionnaire also consisted of questions that nobody can see except for the Mars One staff themselves. In the private part of the questionnaire, Mars One asked for specific examples of a time when you are under a lot of stress, a time when you are very frightened, how you will deal with the separation from your family forever, and also specific types of personalities that you find hard to live with. As you can tell, the questions in the questionnaire and the five character traits that Mars One is looking for are really geared towards ensuring that the astronaut candidates can work well as a small team and can also survive on Mars. So once the candidates get through round one, what happens in round two? Uh, this is in, it is the interview for the management training course, is it? Yes, yes it is. Oh. <laughs> oh dear, I don't think I'm doing very well. Why do you say that? Uh, well, I don't know. Do you say it because you didn't know? Well, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully the interviews don't go like that, but you never know. Nobody's really started talking about what kind of questions Mars One might ask during the interviews, but the interviews could go very well like that because I think what Mars One's going to be looking for are the reactions to the questions as much as the content of the answers themselves. Mars One plans to select about 100 applicants per region for the interview. There could be as many as 300 regions in the world and more than 50 in the United States, I've read. Now, all applicants that are selected for the interview have to produce a clean bill of health from their doctor or else they're not allowed to move on to the next round. So let's say a candidate is healthy and does well in the interview process. What happens in round three? <laughs> round three could very well end up being like the Survivor TV show. Mars One plans to select about 20 to 40 candidates per region or per country, we're not quite sure, but I think it's per country because they plan to create a TV show and broadcast it in the country and have the 20 to 40 candidates compete in events that show survival skills or show intelligence or something like that. They're not quite sure. They haven't released the details about how they're going to do it. Yoga Tribe releases their puzzle pieces! Keep on. Keep it going. Don't panic. Go, go, go. Yoda Tribe released their puzzle pieces. Presumably, the challenges that the astronaut candidates face in round three could look a lot like that survivor clip I just showed you. We're not quite sure of the details about how Mars One will run the reality TV show aspect of this, but we know that by the end of round three, each country, the public in each country, will have selected one person to represent them in round four. And Mars One also reserves the right to select people who are not chosen by each country to move on to round four also. So now that those astronaut candidates are selected, what happens in round four? You may have gone to Cambridge, but I'm an honorary graduate of Starfleet Academy. In round four, Mars One creates about six to ten teams of four, two men and two women, out of the 24 or 40 candidates that made it past round three. Now, in round four, what they're trying to do is 
train the astronaut candidates for all the skills that they'll need to survive on the planet because being a doctor is not one of the mandatory requirements for Mars One. They plan to train the astronaut candidates over the next seven to eight years for those vital skills. Two will receive extensive medical training. Two will receive extensive training in engineering so that they can fix anything in the colony. One will become a geologist to study the rocks. One will become an exobiologist to study the possible life on the planet. Everybody will become an electrician. Everybody will receive training in physiotherapy and everybody will receive training in psychology. And probably it's likely that everybody will become a farmer as well. Mars plans to build simulation habitats and every two years each team of four will have to spend, I've read three months, in the simulation habitat in cold environments, maybe Antarctica or something like that, where they will have to grow their own food, they'll have to take care of their oxygen supply and their water supply, they have to repair the colony, Every time they go outside of the habitat, they have to wear a Mars One suit. And then also communications will be delayed, simulated delayed, just like as if they were on Mars. Now we have a bunch of people training for seven or eight years to go to Mars. What happens in round five? T minus 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. We have liftoff of Falcon 9. Dragon Ascent's first stage acceleration. Falcon 9 is cleared. And there they go, blasting off from Mars. Of course, the astronauts will be on a much bigger rocket than that one. That one was a resupply mission for the International Space Station, but it was built by the same corporation, which is suspected to be probably providing the rocket for Mars 1, which is SpaceX. Now, after they blast off, their journey is about seven to eight months long to get from Earth to Mars. They'll land there, set up their habitats, and settle into life there. And then every two years after that, four more astronauts will come. And that's it for the selection process. So we've had the application, we've had the interview, we've had the live televised reality TV show round where the public selected their candidate, and we've had the training round, seven to eight years of training, and what I call the fifth round, but really is the blast off stage. And then we'll have four people on Mars. That's all for today, everybody. So thanks for watching. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.